On the evening of August 4th, 1951, 24-year-old field worker Peter Hernandez was drinking at a local bar in the small town of Edna, Texas. A tenant farmer named Joe Espinosa was also at the bar that evening and began making fun of Hernandez. An argument ensued, and soon Peter Hernandez left the bar and went home, where he retrieved a gun. He then returned to the bar and in front of a room full of witnesses, shot Joe Espinosa in the chest. Espinosa was rushed to a hospital, but died less than 30 minutes later. Peter Hernandez was arrested and charged with murder. Within 24 hours, Hernandez was indicted by an all-Anglo jury. He was denied bail, and his trial was to be held in Jackson County. Hernandez's family hired Mexican-American attorneys John Herrera and James De Anda, who were soon joined by Carlos Cadena and Gus Garcia. It's not one of those things where someone was wrongly put in prison for doing something that uh, he didn't do. Oh, he did it. He shot him. He shot him dead in front of God, mother, and country. They all said he shot him. That's not the issue. He was clearly guilty. The issue that Mexican-American attorneys and activists were interested in is the fact that he was tried by an all-white jury. And by all-white, I mean all-Anglo. While there was no doubt that Peter Hernandez was guilty of murder, his legal team petitioned the court to void the indictment as well as the jury panel, claiming jury discrimination. They proved that in 25 years, no one of Mexican or Latin descent had sat on a jury of any kind in Jackson County. The argument that counsel made was that the people in control of the government, the jury commissioners, would scan through voter rolls and eliminate those with Hispanic names. And as such, they were able to prune down those who would bring indictments in grand jury sense, or try cases in a petit jury sense, to those who were Anglo. Their research also showed that although 14% of Mexican Americans living in the county were eligible for jury service, they were regularly excluded from being able to serve simply because of their ethnicity. The local uh, roles uh, of potential jurors didn't even include Mexican Americans. They were excluded. The argument that the local community gave, and this was the argument they would advance at various levels of appeals, is, hey, Mexican Americans are white. They are Caucasian. These are 12 Caucasian men deciding on a Caucasian man. Mexican Americans in the 1940s were classified as members of the white race. Uh, it actually goes back to the very beginning of the existence of Mexican people in the United States because when the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo was signed in 1848, the American government gave those Mexicans that stayed in the formerly Mexican territory, gave them one year to decide if they wanted to be U.S. citizens. If they stayed, they were going to automatically become classified as U.S. citizens. And where does the white concept come in here? It comes in from the fact that at that time, by law, the only individuals that could be naturalized and be citizens of the United States were whites, other than the blacks who were declared citizens by the 14th Amendment. So you had that unique history that made Mexicans white people by law. The district court rejected the claims of jury discrimination, upholding the indictment. The trial was held in October of 1951, where an all-Anglo jury found Peter Hernandez guilty of murdering Joe Espinosa. Hernandez was sentenced to serve the rest of his life in prison. But even though Hernandez was hardly a sympathetic figure, his attorneys saw an opportunity to use this case to challenge what they saw as discrimination against a specific class of citizens. However, since Mexican Americans were considered white, they knew it was highly unlikely that any state appellate court would agree with their argument concerning jury discrimination. 
They recognize that the only way to successfully overturn the exclusion of Mexican Americans on Texas juries was to take their case all the way to the United States Supreme Court. This is an argument about how you demonstrate how a society dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal, how you demonstrate and determine guilt, and what procedures need to be followed, whether or not you can preclude one part of the community from the decision to bring a charge against an individual, to try that individual, and then to convict that individual. This is not a question about Hernandez's innocence or guilt. This is a question about how society tries cases. After careful consideration, the team of lawyers decided to move ahead with their appeal. They went to the Texas Court of Criminal Appeals, and as expected, the court upheld the murder conviction and life sentence, and then refused to hear arguments regarding jury discrimination. In January of 1953, the attorneys filed a petition requesting that the United States Supreme Court review the decision made by the Texas Court of Appeals. Nine months later, their request was granted. What had begun as a small town murder case would soon make civil rights history. On January 11, 1954, the arguments in Hernandez versus Texas were made. The nine justices had to answer the following question. When a state tries a defendant of a particular race or ancestry before a jury, and all persons of that race or ancestry have been excluded from serving on the jury, is the defendant's 14th Amendment right to equal protection of the law being violated? The argument that Hernandez's attorneys made was that the Equal Protection Clause isn't limited to discrimination based on race. Its, its purview includes any kind of invidious discrimination, and that's the key word. Invidious discrimination, which is discrimination that is designed to suppress a minority group. Okay. And they said this is discrimination in Texas, in the criminal justice system, that is designed to keep Mexican Americans who are American citizens from participating fully in the body politic. What you've got here is a 25-year record of no Mexican Americans being involved in the criminal justice system other than as defendants um, at all. And so the background facts here provide the ability to say that there is a discriminatory effect in the way jurors are chosen in Jackson County. And that discriminatory effect is so great that you deny criminal defendants the equal protection of the laws because there is no way that anybody from their ethnic uh, background will be involved in their adjudication of guilt or innocence. Attorneys for the state of Texas contended that it was only a coincidence that the Hernandez jury had been all white. They also argued that since Mexican Americans were part of the white race, Hernandez's rights had not been violated at all. But Gus Garcia and Carlos Cadena, who presented the oral arguments before the court, contended that while Mexican Americans might have been legally considered white, they were consistently treated as a class apart, meaning that Mexican Americans were seen as a distinct group of citizens and were treated differently as a result. What is a class apart? Basically, they were making the argument that yes, technically, the defendants are right. We are technically Caucasian. Nevertheless, one can discriminate among whites, by whites among whites. One can discriminate along the lines of a particular class of white people. And that's how Mexican Americans are singled out. And they pointed out in the case they developed certain things that had been occurring. The restaurants in town had signs that said, no Mexican served. They also established evidence that the kids were segregated in Mexican schools. But the dynamite evidence uh, that was found was by mere coincidence there at the courthouse where one of the lawyers, John J. Herrera, uh, took a break from the action so he could go to the men's room. And when he tried to go into one that was there wherever the lawyer or all the other guys were going, the Anglos, uh, a janitor told him in Spanish, no, senor, no, sir, not there. 
and I went down in the basement and there was a bathroom with a sign on it that said, colored men, hombres aquí, men here. In the very courtroom where the state of Texas was arguing that Mexican Americans were white, they had segregated bathrooms and both blacks and Mexicans were consigned to these bathrooms. It's very clear that this is a, a separate and distinct subgroup within the larger group and that the state wasn't wrapping its benevolent arms around them and saying, hey, you're white, you're like us. It was doing it to, to reduce the racial space where Mexican Americans could live and operate. It in fact separated them. And since they are a minority of the population, since they are treated differently, and since they are treated in a way that keeps them out of political power, the 14th Amendment applies to them as well. The Supreme Court agreed with the plaintiffs, and its decision was unanimous. The court ruled that the state of Texas had applied different laws to people who were of Mexican descent, and that this was a violation of the Equal Protection Clause of the 14th Amendment. Chief Justice Earl Warren wrote, when the existence of a distinct class is demonstrated, and it is further shown that the laws, as written or applied, single out that class for different treatment, not based on some reasonable classification, the guarantees of the Constitution have been violated. The court also agreed with the class apart theory concluding that in Jackson County, where Peter Hernandez had been indicted for murder, Mexican-Americans had been treated as a separate class of people, distinct from Anglos. Therefore, representatives of that class must be a part of jury pools. Hernandez makes no guarantee that a jury composition is going to be proportionate to population groups in society. Um, what Hernandez says is that population groups in society cannot be excluded from consideration for jury duty. They have to be part of the veneer, the pool from which jurors are drawn. After the Supreme Court ruled in his favor, Peter Hernandez was retried in Texas with the new jury, two of whom were Mexican-American. He was once again found guilty of the murder of Joe Espinosa and sentenced to 20 years at Harlem State Prison Farm. He was later paroled in 1960. The importance of the decision in Hernandez versus Texas was overshadowed a few weeks later by the Supreme Court's historic ruling in the case of Brown versus Board of Education. Nevertheless, historians and legal scholars agree that all Americans, regardless of race, gender, or ethnicity, owe a great deal to the people who helped bring the Hernandez case before the Supreme Court in an effort to end jury discrimination.